Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. We're in the sports section. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, what I'm about to say may not be the public narrative. Understand, I'm not here to even look coherent. All I'm here to do is to tell you what I think about this fight, what I think about the fighters, how I see it. Sometimes here online, I'm going to sound like a complete nutcase. I'll take that chance, right? The point is, we're here trying to get an edge on the casino. So we're going to travel the road less traveled in talking about a fight, whatever the scoring whatever the official result. Let's boldly go wherever the film takes us. Now to those in boxing, especially those in the United States who may know the big names but might not know the young up-and-comers. If you don't know that George Groves has punching power, if you didn't know that George Groves is world-class. Let me be clear. Just know one thing. He's real. You know, here in the States, we hear a lot about Andre Ward at 168 pounds. We hear a lot about Carl Frotch at 168 pounds. We don't hear about the saint, George Groves. But because of this fight, forget the U.S., globally, that's going to change. And as for Carl Frotch, a warrior, if ever there was one, a man who has taken on all comers. You remember the Super Six, took on Kessler, took on Ward, took on Arthur Abraham when that fight was risky, took on Glenn Johnson, on and on, right? He's a man who has done it the hard way. You remember his war years ago with Brian McGee. Carl, we fans remember. You remember his squeaker against Andre Durrell. You remember his fight against Jermaine Taylor where he had to get up off the canvas and behind on the scorecards to beat Jermaine Taylor. Right? You remember how Carl has had to travel to an opponent's soil like he did against Taylor, like he did in the first Kessler fight to fight him. Now let me say this. After watching this George Groves fight, Carl now has a fight. In fact, it's the ending of a fight that people question. This fight might haunt him. This fight's going to stay with him. It's going to chase him. Right? Think Libredo Andrade against Lucy and Butte won. Isn't this Carl Frotch's Jose Luis Castillo versus Floyd Mayweather one moment? Isn't this Carl Frotch's Antonio Tarver versus Roy Jones moment. In boxing, the real judges are the fans. It's us. It's you. Even legitimate elite fighters can have moments where the outcome is so questioned by fans that the losing opponent doesn't even have to chase the champion for a rematch. Rather, the champion may have to chase the opponent. Well, let me just say this. And globally, we might not fully appreciate it. Here in the States, this fight didn't get the pub it should have. 
But there is a full-blown civil war right now in the United Kingdom. And it involves the world championship at 168 pounds. More importantly, it really does involve the question of who is the best in that country at 168 pounds. Right? There are three guys. One of them was not in the ring. James the Gale. These two guys were. And let me just say this. George Groves has gone from being viewed as just another cocky young lion ready to be taught a lesson by the Frotch Empire to now being viewed as the man outside the king's castle who may well topple the throne. Now boxing is about perception. Let me get controversial. Whoever officially won yesterday's fight, whoever has the belt around their waist, just understand that to the public, the big winner is George Groves, right? This brush fire is going to turn into a five alarm fire, right? Let me just say this. The start of the fight. And we'll get into the fight round by round here. I'll tell you what. I was watching this fight. And I'm not kidding. 90 seconds into the fight. It was obvious to me. That there was a talent gap in the ring. It was obvious to me that George Groves was faster, he was sharper, he just had the much better reflexes, that if George Groves was just able to keep his head, he was gonna win the fight going away. Now I know the judges' scorecards were close, whatever. This isn't the first time I've disagreed with the judges. Groves comes out, and I have to be blunt here, he shocks me. The Groves I'm familiar with is a guy who has a multiplicity of skills. But he can also fight on his back foot. Now, George Groves actually lied to the public. George Groves actually gave the public and Carl Frotch notice that he was going to back up Carl Frotch in the third round that he was going to start the fight, be a little bit cautious, then he was going to back up Carl Frotch and handle business. You know what? He delivered early. That first round is a classic. It's a jarring round. Who thought that George Groves was going to come out Joe Fraser style? Right? He's fighting shorter than Carl Frotch. He's bent at the waist. Frotch couldn't hit his body, couldn't find his body with a compass. He's much faster than Frotch. Has Frotch ever looked slower? Let me say this. I thought Frotch looked bad in the Andre Durrell fight. You know what? He looked great in that fight compared to this. Right? Let me say this too. Frotch is flicking a left jab. George Groves, right, wide base, has a hand up. Groves has that left jab timed from the first round, right, before the knockdown. Just the energy level, just the bounce the guys have. Frotch looks like he's standing upright. Groves is a little bit more bent and he's bouncing. And he's faster than Carl Frotch, right? He's better defensively than Carl Frotch. He's basically doing things that Carl Frotch has no answer for. Then after doing that, I mean, after doing that, he punctuates it. Right hand. Frotch goes down hard. 10-8 round. Now let me just say this. At that point, 
with that physical advantage and it's profound right at that point George Grove should in my opinion have taken other tools from his toolbox right now hindsight is a hundred percent anyone any hack even me can come online and say the guy should have done this the guy should have done that after we've seen what didn't work right but let me say this George Groves was committed to being on his front foot against Carl Frox and in my opinion he wasn't winning the fight he was dominating the fight let's go through it round by round you've heard my take on the first round and really it's jarring in other words you see George Groves come out the commentators on UK television are wondering whether George Groves is going to be calm in the fight George Groves is as calm as a guy who knows he has a talent advantage on his opponent Right? George Groves is not in there to do anything other than to pick up the title the other guy inadvertently has. Right, Groves knows he's better than Carl Frotch. Not talk. I'm talking about in the ring. Who faces Carl Frotch and comes forward on his front foot, bouncing, you know, dodging the jab, timing a right hand that landed with stunning regularity throughout the fight? Who's the harder puncher in the fight? George Groves. Let me go one step further. Groves is doing stuff that I'll say is a little deceptive to the public because there are moments in this fight where Carl Frotch comes forward with a two-handed attack. Groves is on the ropes where he shouldn't be. But understand, Groves is literally blocking the shots. He's moving with the shots. The punches aren't landing on him. The crowd, of course, cheers a little bit. They think Carl Frotch is finally getting on track. Far from it. Carl Frotch is not landing. I don't even know how CompuBox counts those punches, those attempted punches. But for most of this fight, George Groves knew exactly what Carl Frotch was going to do. So, let's say this. Right. Oh, also, let me let me make one other point, too. George Groves is in there. There's an economy of movement. Right. When Carl Frotch throws, George Groves rolls with the punch. Right. His head might look stiff. But whenever Carl Frotch throws, he rolls with the punch. He's much savvier than Carl Frotch. In terms of head movement and Carl Frotch is actually a very savvy very technical fighter right I thought UK television hit a home run with this at one point the team I was listening to Wayne McCullough I think was one of the guys they actually say given that there's such a profound speed gap in the fight they actually say when's the last time Carl Frotch actually fought a guy in his 20s who had speed and they had to go back to the Andre Durrell fight, right? Think about it. Let me say this too, two of Carl's worst fights, the Andre Durrell fight and the Jermaine Taylor fight, right? Both of those guys had a little bit of speed. Now, let's just say, first round I gave to George Groves. Second round, 10-8. Right, Carl Frotch is on the canvas. It's not a flash knockdown. When I see around where a guy <laughs> hits the canvas, his back hits the canvas, his feet come up, he gets up, he's shaky. That's a 10 8 round to me, especially when the guy who got knocked down didn't get a knockdown. Right, by the way, understand that's the secret to this fight. Carl Frotch never gets a knockdown. Right, second round, Carl Frotch is still uneven. The second round has to be a George Groves round, right? To the Carl Frotch people watching this video, can we agree that at the end of the second round, George Groves has a three-round lead? Three. 
right? Let me say this too. Young guys sometimes get a little bit full of themselves. George Groves, this is my own lament, is too front foot heavy in this fight. He keeps coming forward. Where is the back foot George Groves who fought several rounds effectively behind a jab against James DeGale? Why is George Groves so front foot heavy? I'll tell you why. I think that knockdown in the first round actually hurt him a little bit. Had he worked up to the knockdown. He wouldn't have been so hell-bent on knocking out Carl Frox. Instead, he gets the knockdown, and then he decides he's just going to blow out Carl Frox. George Groves, at the end of the day, is a fighter. And, ultimately, officially at least, it cost him. Let's go to the third round. This will upset some Carl Frox people. But I thought... The third round was a draw. I didn't see Carl Frotch dominate the third round. I've looked through some media reports. I, I just don't have that round on my film. The third round is close. George Groves is on his front foot. He's actually the one stalking Carl Frotch. He's the one pushing the issue. Now, Frotch does better than he did in the first two rounds, right? Now, sometimes when you're scoring a fight, you'll say, you know what? He improved this round. Let me give it to him. Not so fast. Right? The question isn't whether Carl Frotch improved in the third round. The question should be whether Carl Frotch won the third round. I had the third round a draw. Now, the fourth round, the beginning of it is comical. If you're in a boxing technique, please watch the beginning of the fourth round. George Groves dodges Carl Frotch's jab so effortlessly and easily that it's embarrassing. Now, let me say this. The difference between your 20s and your 30s in general, sure, you have some guys who were masters in their 20s, Salvador Sanchez, Floyd Mayweather, but the difference between your 20s and your 30s, at least where George Groves is in his 20s and where he'll be in a few years, is when you start the fourth round after clearly winning the first two rounds, after having a lead, and you see that the other guy can't hit you with a jab when you show even a little movement. I believe, you know, in your 20s you say, well, what I'm doing is working. I'm going to knock this guy out. I need to prove something to the world. In your 30s, you're thinking differently. You're thinking strategically. You're like, okay, I know with a little movement, this guy can't hit me with his jab. Which one of us needs to change the pattern of this fight? I've already proven to the crowd that I can knock this man down, that I can hurt this man, that I can outbox this man. First impressions matter. I've proven that to the crowd. So if this guy can't touch me, when I move even a little bit, if I could dodge his jab effortlessly, then why don't I do that for a couple of rounds, right? This guy loses unless he can cut the distance between the two of us. Why would I help him cut the distance between the two of us, right? You know, bottom line is, George Groves, after that beginning to the fourth round, should have flashed a jab, should have had some ring generalship, smashed a few, flashed a few smiles, maybe even shuffled a little bit, showed the crowd, look, I'm in control, used his movement, not depleted his body or tested his chin by actually trading with Carl Frotch. No, at that point, the point's made. So at that point, you're basically saying to Carl Frotch, I've knocked you down. I've, I've boxed you. Now, come try to find me. You don't find me, you lose the fight. Not only that, if you have the formula that works, if George Groves wants to be on his front foot, keep in mind, George Groves' right hand is landing repeatedly. If he wants to, 
you know, remind the crowd that he's the dominant fighter, then why not do what other fighters have done? Ray Leonard, Ali, right? You're moving for part of the round, proving that Carl Frotch is immobile. Then why not come in and fight in bursts? You remember how Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler, right? Pick some 30-second moment in the round, get back to what you did in the first two rounds, flash some right hands, knock them back a bit, then back back out, get back on your horse. Let the judges know nothing's happened in this fight other than this guy has yet to solve the puzzle. I'm not saying run for the entire round like De La Hoya did in the last three rounds against Felix Trinidad, a fight that quite frankly, you know, an argument can be made that De La Hoya still won that fight. No, I'm not saying run the entire round. I'm saying pick your spots. Right? You're dominating the other guy. The crowd's buzzing. Right? You know, on British TV, people are saying, who would have expected this? You've already shaken things up. You have a great jab. We've seen that jab, George, against James DeGale in other fights. So why would you, at that point, Decide to do the one thing that gives Carl hope. Actually try to trade with Carl. Why? Have him find you. Right? The back foot is part of the strategy in boxing. You've proven you could take him apart on your front foot. At that point, why not alternate a little bit? If you're a great fastball pitcher, don't you need to throw in a changeup every now and then? Don't you need to break off a curveball every now and then? If you have a formula that works and you're fighting a guy who's adaptive, reactive like Carl Frotch, don't you need to change that formula? Mix in some variation. Right? Well, let's say this. George Groves in my opinion, still wins the fourth round, right, with the same style. But at this point, the fight starts to get higher risk. George Groves is trading too much with Carl Frotch. He's already proven he's faster than Frotch. He has the faster foot speed than Frotch. But George Groves is more of a fighter than a boxer. Right? This is Billy Kahn against Joe Lewis. Right? George Groves simply was too emotionally caught up in the moment. Right? He throws a great right hand with about 25 seconds left. Right? At the end of the fourth round on British television, the announcer says, even Groves' supporters would be surprised to see him dominate the way he has. Right? Look at the telecast. It's clear at the end of the fourth round, George Groves is the one who's made the big impression. We get to the fifth round. Right? Let me just say, on the telecast, they say it is all going wrong for Carl. Right? George Groves is landing. Carl Frotch looks like he's landing. In other words, Carl Frotch comes in with a two-handed attack at times, but I'm telling you, if you look at the replays, George Groves is blocking most of the shots. But still, still, George Groves is trading too much. Right? We get to the sixth round. At one minute and 30 seconds of the sixth round, and I'm giving you the time so you can look at the film yourself. George Groves starts landing bombs. On UK television, the announcer says he can't miss with the right hand. That's how this fight was going, folks. Right? Um, in fact, they go further. I believe it's Wayne McCullough and says he shouldn't throw anything else. Now, here again, I believe if he were a little bit older, George Groves would be outside dancing around 
and then threatening the right hand, right? Framing it. So the crowd already knows he's been landing that right hand. This is a weapon Carl doesn't have an answer for, right? He should be moving around, peppering Carl with jabs for several moments of rounds. In other words, look at the film. The point's been proven. I believe unless Carl did something dramatic, we all understood by the sixth round that his title was gone. What does George Groves do? In the last 30 seconds of this round, George Groves, in my opinion, voluntarily starts trading with Carl Froch. Rather than kind of like wave at him, you remember Pernell Whitaker at the end of the Chavez fight that we all know he won, you know, Pernell backs away and waves, literally waves in the ring at Julio Cesar Chavez. Rather than, you know, just take a step back in a round he's won and just kind of like wave at Carl Froch or, you know, motion to the crowd. Let the crowd know, I'm doing what I want. I once saw Floyd Mayweather fight. <laughs> Mayweather actually in a round started talking to the guys doing the telecast, right? The mastery was so dominant that Mayweather was able to add commentary to his own fight. That's the stage George Groves is at in the sixth round. Last 30 seconds, Grove starts trading on UK television, I believe. Again, it's Wayne McCullough who really deserves an Emmy. He says, what you're seeing is the foolishness of youth, right? Unfortunately, George Groves wanted to do more than win the fight. He wanted to embarrass Carl Frotch. The problem is, if you have judges predisposed to give close rounds to the reigning champion. And keep in mind, you know, the old adage is you have to beat the champion to take his title. I myself, looking at fights like Darren Barker against Daniel Gill, lamented the fact that in a close fight, they gave the nod to the challenger, right? My point is this, if you're George Groves and you're the challenger against the more proven champion, you can't have moments like the last 30 seconds of the sixth round. The sixth round, you could make a case, goes to Carl Froch. I believe, though, that if you look at the first two minutes and 30 seconds of the round, I believe the sixth round should be scored a draw. I know I'm scoring a lot of draws here, but these are three-minute rounds. And again, Carl Froch did not get a knockdown in the fight until the ending. Now, if you believe I'm overselling George Groves, if you believe that experienced boxing people looking at this fight would have had it much closer, like the judges had it, just understand that Jim Watt, the score on UK television, at the end of six rounds had it 59-54 for George Groves. Jim Watt had George Groves winning by five rounds at the end of the sixth round. Now let me ask you, and again, I think this is just a boxing experience thing. If you have the movement advantage, if you have the hand speed advantage, if you have a back foot game, right? If you have a good jab, if you've jumped out to a big lead on the champ, if the champ really only has a shot at a knockout, if he could close the distance between the two of you, why would you stand around and trade with the champion? Why isn't George Groves moving more at this point in the fight? Well, round seven happens. In my opinion, Frotch wins round set seven. But let me say this. With about 50 seconds left, there's a huge shot from George Groves. Understand that right hand is still landing, right? Let me say this too, UK television actually says Groves did not really take anything too heavy in that round. That's at the end of the round. 
Then they interview one of the UK's best fighters, David Hay. Now understand, David Hay and George Groves are friends. They've appeared in videos together. They both used to train with Adam Booth, right? Groves has moved on. But David Hay basically says, you know what? Right now, Groves looks like the champion, right? Don't even believe me or Jim Watt. Believe David Hay, right? We get to the eighth round. The eighth round is too sloppy, in my opinion, to conclusively go to either fighter. But if you're a Carl Frotz supporter and you want to give the eighth round to Carl Frotz, I have no objections to that, right? Just like if you're a Groves supporter and you want to give the eighth round to George Groves, fair enough. Just understand the action is stop and go. The referee warns Frotch of a forearm, right? There's a further warning of both fighters with about 15 seconds left. Neither fighter is reeling around the ring. But incredibly, and I do mean incredibly, in the eighth round <laughs> of a fight where George Groves is the challenger, George Groves is still in there trading with, with Carl Frotch. Why is he doing that? Right, Groves himself needs to look at the video and he needs to ask himself, why did I get so caught up in this fight? Right, understand there are those at ringside who think you're winning the fight by several rounds. And all I'm saying is, again, the way Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler. Why not hover around? Right, come in with flurries. Fight for... 30 seconds, 40 seconds at a time. Pace yourself. At this point, shouldn't you be thinking, I have a lead. Let me make it to the finish line. Right? Only go for the knockout if it presents itself. You don't need the knockout at this point to win the fight. Now let's get to the controversial finish. I know this video is going too long and I apologize to everybody. Round 9. You want to know how one-sided round nine was? Wayne McCullough, at the beginning of round nine on UK television, says, beautiful shots again by George Groves. George Groves comes out in the ninth round and he's landing big shots. He's landing big shots. He's not only in the fight, folks, early in the ninth round, he's winning the round. Let's also keep in mind what's happened here. Carl Frotch has been knocked down in the fight, not George Groves. Not George Groves. My understanding of the box of boxing, too, might be a bit skewed. I thought even if you get knocked down to the canvas, you had 10 seconds to get up. Have the rules changed? Has the sport now reached the point where if I get dazed in a fight, I'm winning. The fight's over? When did, when did the rules change? Well, anyway, here, let's just say, Carl Frotch does come in. He does daze George Groves. I'm not saying George Groves isn't dazed. Here's what I am saying. Understand, George Groves is still bending at the waist. He still has his balance. He's still, you know, defending himself. These days, you know what? I think we've all seen hundreds of boxing matches where one of the guys gets dazed every now and then. You know, at this point, shouldn't you at least allow Groves if he's going to hit the canvas? And it's unclear, right? Because Groves actually shows pretty good clinching skills. But if he's going to hit the canvas, don't you at least owe Groves the opportunity to hit the canvas just like Carl Frotch did earlier in this fight? Why does Frotch get to hit the canvas and then get up and look shaky, but yet George Groves doesn't even get that opportunity? This ref jumped in way too soon. Now, I'll agree here online, many people have criticized me in the past for opposing a lot of these quick stoppages. Quite frankly, I didn't even like the uh, Ricky Burns stoppage over Kevin Mitchell, right? This, though, is ridiculous. George Groves is dazed. I agree. I agree. You know what? There's something called a second wind. I'm not convinced George Groves would have been beaten 
We don't know. The referee actually robbed not just Groves, but Carl Frotch. If Carl Frotch was going to come back in this fight, he should have had an opportunity to do so. Right? Winning this way taints it. Right? When the referee stepped in, keep in mind, in this fight, where the ref had stepped in multiple times to warn the fighters, right? At one point, the guys on British TV thought Carl Frotch was going to be docked a point. Right? When the ref stopped, you know, steps in, I was watching it. I thought, oh, what's he going to do? Warn guys on something? Did I miss another forearm? When he waved it off, it was shocking. Let me point out, too. Groves immediately protests. He not only knows exactly where he is, he knows exactly what the referee is doing. So I'll say this, and I will concede. Carl Frotch is a great finisher. I'll concede, Carl Frotch has had multiple big fights where he has closed the gap late in fights. The Jermaine Taylor comeback was tremendous, right? You know, Carl Frotch is a guy who literally late in a fight can turn it on. No question about it. I thought the first Kessler fight, Carl Frotch did a tremendous job late in that fight, right? I know he didn't get the nod, but I thought he did a tremendous job. The Andre Ward fight. Carl Frotch, I thought, makes a comeback in the second half of that fight, right? I have no doubt that Carl Frotch is a guy with the heart of a warrior who was going to try to close the show as this fight progressed. I have no doubt about that. But what I do have doubts about is whether he would have been successful. I don't know if Carl Frotch would have won this fight. Let me point out, too, to me it seemed like Carl Frotch was dazed and confused more in this match than George Groves. Okay, let's say George Groves hits the canvas in the ninth round. You know what? He'd still have a chance to win the fight on the judges' scorecards, which, curiously, didn't seem to sync with the scorecards on British television, right? Jim Watt's scorecard. But even with these judges' scorecards, George Groves, who was ahead in the fight at the time of the stoppage, could have been knocked down, gotten up, would still have been in the fight. By the way, he's not knocked down. He's not. So the stoppage to me is premature. I know people are concerned about brain trauma and all this other stuff. I know what happened to Magnomad has people kind of like really with a heightened sensitivity and stuff like that. But as Ray Robinson once said, this is the hurt business. George Groves is there for a title. He's the challenger. He's the one challenging the champion. Right? He's there winning the fight. He gets dazed. Is there anyone watching this video surprised that someone gets dazed in a championship fight at 168? He gets dazed. He's holding on. He's still rolling with punches. Right? He's still conscious. He's still defensive early in the round. Look at his left hand. He still has his left hand up, folks. Still has it up early in the round. Right? To me, this was ridiculous. And I've seen more than one fight where a guy looks a little bit shaky in the 8th and ninth rounds. And then, of course, gets a second win that takes him to the finish line. Here, this referee didn't give George Groves an opportunity to get a second win. <laughs> a second win. He also didn't give Carl Frotch an opportunity to close the show. So what you have here really is an emergence. That's the storyline on the fight. It's not that Carl Frotch successfully defended his title. It's that George Grove showed up and showed us that, quite frankly, he has more talent than Carl Frotch. He's younger and fresher than Carl Frotch. The question is whether... He can keep his head and improve his strategy so that his talent advantage becomes a difference in the fight, right? Carl Frotch paced himself better than George Groves in this fight, right? That's something you would expect from the experienced fighter. Carl Frotch didn't panic. He didn't get too caught up in the moment. He gets knocked down early, gets up. His corner is very concerned. I don't think the corner recovered until the end of the third round. Right? You know, the corner looks concerned and stuff like that. But Carl Frotch, 
had the skill that comes with experience. George Groves has the talent advantage. In a rematch, put me among those. And this is post official knockout or stoppage, right? TKO. Put me among those who believes that George Groves wins the rematch. Quite frankly, Carl Frotch, in my opinion, for his legacy, has to give Groves a rematch. Just like Floyd Mayweather had to give Castillo a rematch. Because if that doesn't happen, people are going to be talking about it. George Groves is going to then be a mockingbird to what Carl Frotch hopes to accomplish. So let's hope the people in boxing get this right. I know there are a lot of other fighters out there, Paravin, Bika, Andre Ward, but these two guys need to resolve this themselves, right? And let's just hope the ref in the next fight isn't as anxious to stop the fight without the loser even getting knocked down as this ref was, right? I'm sure the ref had the best of intentions. Understand, as I was looking at the stoppage, George Groves' hands don't drop and he's not defenseless. That's not what happened, right? George Groves gets hit with some shots, but he's trying to roll and he still has his body in a bit of a crouch. Then you see the ref grab him, right? If Groves is balanced enough to be in a bit of a crouch, he should have been allowed to continue, right? Carl Frotch may have been shortchanged too because if Groves couldn't survive the round, then this would have been a heroic come-from-behind victory for Carl Frotch. Instead, Carl Frotch in post-fight interviews is getting booed. As if he wasn't heroic in hanging in there against a guy who, quite frankly, hit as hard as him, was faster than him, is younger than him, and started faster than him. Well, anyway, I think the ref made a mistake. I think this ending isn't just controversial. It was the wrong ending. Right? I think George Grove has proven to me, at least, he's more talented than Carl Frotch. Right? But George Groves is young. His pacing wasn't the best. His strategy of always being on his front foot wasn't the best. What's he doing trading with Carl Frotch at the end of the sixth round? That's, that's one of those things that has an OG like me scratching my head. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.